Hey guys, what is going on? It is me, Box 12 here, and welcome to the Month of the Mad God Marathon. For the entire month of December, I will be uploading a new guide video every week. Today, we're looking at the Acclaim versus the Demon Blade. Now, I'm also going to be covering the Cutlass, the Stone Sword, the Sea Sword, and whatever sword there may be, but I didn't want to put that all into one video because I have one too many things to say about each, and making the title of this video Acclaim versus Deep Blade versus Stone Sword versus Sea Sword versus... It's too many things! Gotta split it up. But before we begin, we have to do a little history lesson on swords in general. Swords are basically giant daggers with really low range, and they do a ton of damage, meaning if you want your DPS, you have to get close to the enemy, and that's why most melees are given a lot of death to survive that close combat. Alright then, let's get out our swords and compare these two. Nope. Nope. Yes. The Sword of Acclaim is the tier 12 wine cellar top. It's the best of the bunch. Among all of the tiered swords in the game, the Acclaim is the best. It's not like the Obsidian Dagger where it has more DPS than some of the tiers above it. Sword of Acclaim is the best tiered sword out there. No exceptions. That being said, it has a damage range of 220 to 275. And if you take a look at another tier 12 weapon like the Staff of the Cosmic Hole, the tier 12 staff, it has a damage range of 60 to 100. So even the maximum damage on the staff isn't even half the damage of the minimum of a claim. That's how you know how strong a sword is. But then that goes into a whole nother category of DPS and how much attack your wizard has if they max high and the two shots on the staff. But as an item alone, the sword is always better. Now if we take a look at the opposite side of the spectrum, we have the UT Demon Blade dropping from both the Abyss of Demons treasure room and the boss. Now unfortunately, the range of Deep Blade's shots has been changed a little bit. Instead of having 3.5 like a claim, you only have 3.4. It's not a big difference, but if you're actually trying to hit enemies that are far away, you'll notice that it is harder to do with Deep Blade than with a claim. But that's not what makes Deep Blade unique. The difference that sets a claim, in fact, D-Blade from any other sword in the game, is that it has two shots instead of one. That's unheard of. You think of the staff as having two shots, you think of the wand as having one, the bow having three, or two, or one, but the sword? It's a single shot. And that's why it's so hard to get damage with. There's only one shot, but if you can hit your target, you can do massive damage. And that's where people might think that the D-Blade is the best sword in the game. It depends. It's true that you now have more area of damage with two shots, but each and every shot only does a damage range of 150 to 175. Not even the maximum damage on D-Blade is even close to the minimum of a claim. So if we're looking at just single shot items, yeah, okay, a claim clearly takes the cake and it makes D-Blade look kind of shoddy, but that's not what we're looking at. The D-Blade has two shots for a reason, and I'm going to tell you right now, the D-Blade has some of the best DPS in the game. Now, you could just do the math in your head, 150 plus 150 is 300, which is more than Acclaim's 220, but I'm going to bring you guys on over to the DPS calculator, and the link will be in the description this time. I don't know why I didn't put it there last time for the Debo video, but it's here now, so you guys can all mess around with that for a little bit, have some fun. As you can see here, I have the graph between the D-Blade and the Acclaim. D-Blade will be color-coded red, and Acclaim will be color-coded black because, well, there was just some technical difficulty right there. But if you look here, the D-Blade pretty much dominates the Acclaim, against all of the enemies that you'll be facing. It's only once we reach 115 death that a claim starts to become superior. And I'm using the Paladin right now just because he has kind of a reasonable attack index, and if we put on damaging, okay, now D-Blade is way above, but if we put weak, now, okay, he's really low now. So you can mess around with that if you want. But if we're looking at just pure attack, pure decks, the Paladin, D-Blade versus a claim, D-Blade's pretty much the way to go. But, with two shots comes great responsibility, because in order to get that DPS in, you have to hit both of your shots in. If you miss, well then, you're not going to beat out a claim. So that's why D-Blade is more of a skill weapon. Which is ironic, because you'd think having only one shot would mean that you would have to hit your target even better. Which you do, because if you don't hit your target with a claim, you get no damage. At least with D-Blade, you get some but if the person that you're competing with for damage is getting all of his shots in, and you're only getting half of your shots in, that's going to be hard. Not to mention the D-Blade's shots are at a 40 degree angle, 
so it's kind of weird. You have to pretty much sit on your enemy if you want both of the shots in. That's where the difficulty with Deep Blade comes in. It's not just getting your shots in, but positioning yourself to get them in. It's so awkward. But if you can do it, you can do it. Huh. Is that it? Really? Jeez, that was short. I guess there's really not that much to say about D-Blade and Acclaim. D-Blade takes a little bit better positioning than Acclaim does. Acclaim's used for taking on bigger enemies because you can just focus one shot. D-Blade is used on enemies with lower def because you can sit on them, and if they don't do too much damage, then they shouldn't be a problem to you to sit on. Especially if you're a knight, and you can stun the enemy, and sit on the enemy. Then you're safe. That would be my advice. If you're a knight, using D-Blade would be one of the best. If you're a paladin and warrior, it's still good because you have the damage buffs with Berserk and the Pally boost, but you don't have as much def as a knight unless you're using Jug on the warrior, but knight's the safest bet with D-Blade. It's still good on the other classes, but as far as security goes and taking on stronger enemies, the knight has the best bet. It has the highest base def upon max, and it has the best ability for being safe. Jug may double your def, but you can still die to a nut rage. You can still die if you sit on best. You can still die to O2. Knight, you can stun him. So if you think that you're skilled enough to get both of the shots in or sit on the enemy because you're safe and you're careful, use D-Blade, if you have it. Because I know that a lot of people say, I don't have any of these items, why are you making videos on them? Well, it's fun. And people ask me to, so it's a good old time. <sighs> All right then. I better go start making the uh, other parts to this video <laughs> because... It's the Mad God Marathon, and the show must go on. Thank you guys for watching, and as always, don't forget to check out the next episode whenever I post it, which will probably be soon. Alright. See you.